Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to get into a short look using my model who suffers from alopecia. Should I say suffer? Mm -mm, it's not suffering, baby, because guess what? She gets to change up her looks anytime she wants and she looks beautiful without it. But when we get into the wigs, it's all about, it's, a, it's an accessory, right? And so that's pretty much what we're doing today. And I have someone assisting me today. Yes, Lace Assassin, guys. Make sure you guys follow Lace Assassin. Lace Assassin is amazing. He does great work. Guys, let's get into it. So what we're gonna be working with is this hair. It looks a little weird right now, but guess what? We're gonna cut this into a very short look and we're gonna do like some finger waves. This is a full lace wig that we kind of ombre because we're gonna cut majority of this off. So it'll have like an icy look on the tips. All right, so with that being said, this is a medium size full lace wig. So it's entirely too big, it has the actual bands in the inside but we're going to cut all of that out but we're not going to cut it in the beginning we're going to cut it on her head okay so my rule of thumb is i usually do about like three to four fingers mm -hmm. is like the average size forehead but what you can right. do you four i'm four i'm about a four too you about a four it's three to four fingers okay. but or you can do this you can actually take the lace wig and set it on the person so that you can see what looks most natural that's about four. Yeah. Right? Three, between three to four, so you can mark it. I'm using a, um, a eyeliner, a white eyeliner. This helps me know exactly where I'm gonna go. On a regular person that would have hair, we would know where to go. So now we know not to wipe too much of her makeup off. We could just stay behind the dots. So you can go ahead and you're gonna wipe her uh, hairline where we marked it off. Only, you know, and just follow those dots and then wipe around her ear and around her back. We're using some witch hazel wipes. Don't use alcohol. No alcohol. Have you ever done anyone that suffered from alopecia, cancer, or that didn't have any hair? Actually, no. No. So this is like my first time. time. That's good, I like that. Have people reached out to you to, you know, asking to have it done? Actually, well, let me not say that I won't. I just haven't like done someone who's completely bald. I have done people who have, who suffer from like thinner hair. Right, right, right. But just like never. <laughs> you know, a bar client, but I mean, I think it's best because it's just like a blank canvas to work. Yeah, it is. You know, what do you think is the scariest thing about it? Like, cause I think some people feel like they won't be able to like make it look natural on them. Uh, almost to the point of what we're doing now, placing it in the right, yeah. you know, place. I think that's what some people fear. Um, definitely probably like, I think because you don't have certain guidelines, like, you know, some people would just say, oh, I like to put it, you know, a little in front, front of my hairline. Like, yeah. Like, you know, the edges or whatever, you know, that kind of gives people like, oh, I'm going to place it right here. But, mm -hmm. you know, with like such free range, you could probably put it back too far yeah. or, you know, mistake and put it, you know, too forward. Yeah, I agree. All these. Sometimes the witch hazel wipes, they're very safe. But since she has on makeup, let's go in with on top of it right here, especially in that front part so we can get close to those dots. See, the makeup wipes is going to get in. They have oil-free makeup wipes, too. It's better. Yeah. Yeah. Come down here too close to that dot as you can. Yeah, that's what we needed, that makeup wipe. I guess if somebody don't have on makeup, witch hazel, the witch hazel wipes is good. Mm -hmm. It's much better. You know, we got to preserve the makeup as much as we can. That's right, because if she looking good. Then after that, you're gonna go in with your skin protect. Tell them about the skin protect, because I know people get tired of me. I'm gonna I let you love, tell them. I love the skin protect. Um, the first time I used it, remember, I think I caught it and I was like, I see the difference. Yeah. It creates a barrier between the glue and your skin, helps prevent like any breakouts and stuff like that. But my favorite thing is that it has an antiperspirant, so it kind of stops you from sweating so much. And especially like, you know, with clients like on the go and stuff like that, especially like in heat, cause summer's coming. So, 
you know, you do not want to spread your wig off. So make sure you get you some skin protect. I love it. Like, I swear by skin protect. I like it. I got to keep a few on deck because me, like, I'm clumsy. I'll drop it, spill it. But I, I got me, like, five of these in my hair bag right now. So I just spray a little bit on this little cotton round. And I just tap it into the skin. You don't have to overuse this product. A little goes a long way with it, in my opinion. Yep, I love the Skin Protect. I think some people, they are like, you know, you have tried it without the Skin Protect and they're like, well, it worked fine, but you won't know the difference until you use it with, and then you, like you said, you call, you was like, I see the difference. So don't skip this Skin Protect. It is a major step in making your units last. Like I promise. So I just like to go in twice, you know? Two to three times. I think two times is enough. Do all around the back. And she played tennis, right? She played tennis, so we definitely don't want to skip the skin protect. Yeah, so I'm just going to repeat the same process in the back. <laughs> I know it's so used to everybody, they just get the frontals. I use full laces, but I just, um, I just be like putting them on. I just like either sew the back down or just use the clips. Right. You groom, groom down anymore. Yeah, so I just feel like us doing it like this way is going to be so much better, especially to get a good fit for her. Yeah. So in the back, you know what we can follow. You can look, turn, let me see, turn some more if you can. So what I like to uh, go by, uh, also tilt your head back to the back. You see the lining right here, maybe step around so you can see. You see that lining right there? Mm -hmm. Tilt your head forward uh, where it's creasing. Okay. That gives me a general idea of like where I want to go with that tilt your head back you see that yeah so you can mark that off we did the front first because i know uh i want to make sure that's sitting but this right here is just another good way to determine like where to go with that glue that makes sense because the crease like the crease mm -hmm. that's where your hairline yep so guys we're going to be using the bow hole max do you use it? You don't use it that much, right? I don't really use it because um, Lotto switches her wigs out right. a lot. Right. I love the Max. I used it on myself a few times. Back when I used to wear wigs really heavy, but um, this glue, because at first I was so scared because at first I used an acrylic glue, so I was scared, but um, I got this when I did this. I used this on a few of my clients, actually. Um, it can be messy. Yeah, it can be messy, but it's very strong. That's what I really like about it because I want and swimming, like, you know, and my wigs stay down. You know, I hate doing my wigs in the back, but that holds it know. down. So, let me tell you the difference between this and an acrylic. Acrylic glue, it can penetrate the skin, mm -hmm. right? This right here, I think uh, the reason why I try to do so much education is because it can be difficult if you are not you like uh, uh, familiar with it. Right. Silicone dries faster than acrylic. Mm -hmm. And the reason is for that is because it's a little, it's more safe than acrylic. So when you put it on the skin, it's gonna dry. Right. So that's what you want so that it alleviates it from penetrating into the skin. And a lot of people who are conscious about like ingredients, that's what they look for. So that was something I was looking for as well. When you get this guys, it's gonna come with a brush. We give you guys the actual nozzle that we put that inside the uh, container when we ship it to you because this is going to make it so much easy for way, you. Way, way easier. Right. When we first dropped it, we didn't have that. I think then it, did it used to come with a spatula. It had the spatula, but it didn't have this the nozzle. Top. Yeah. So I had to, like, people were having, because I can work with the brush, but then I had to remember there are so many people nowadays, especially after COVID, that are trying to do their own hair because they don't have a choice. So this right here was the game changer in this spatula. I can't tell y'all how many bottles I spilled or messed up because of the brush. <laughs> that brush is deadly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, follow her. I, I really, we really only need one coat. You only need one coat of this silicone. Yeah. Do Some not people do too. Glue. Do not powder. Mm -mm. It's thick. It's thicker. That's the, that's the thing. It's thicker than acrylic and it dries faster than acrylic. You only need one coat. If you want to do two, you can, but you really don't need to. I think I have did one. One. It was good. And when you do it, like, you know what I like to tell people? Practice. Don't just go to throwing it on your face because you have to learn how to control it. It is thicker. So what I like to do, take it, drop it, and spread. You can't keep playing in it because it's dry. I already said it dry fast. And if we keep touching it, it's going to turn white. So you get that little dot on there and then you go to your next area. Practice on your arm. Go to where you dropped it last and spread. 
So you don't want to just try to just take it all across the floor. Uh-uh, do sections. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because some people, they'll be like, Ooh. but just do it in sections, get it nice and flat. That's all you need. You just be making it look so easy. It's easy. It is. It is, it is so Just you, like thinking about how you did it and how I used to try to do it. Yeah. It's just two different things. Right, because I think so, after you pick up that acrylic glue, you can, you can play around with the acrylic glue like that, yeah. but not this one. So my main thing about the, the silicone is just for safety, mm -hmm. but I was like, okay, I gotta put more education so people can know how to use it because it's safer than acrylic. So this is what we gonna do. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, we'll do the front and then we'll come around to the back. So do, we're gonna um, follow the, what you uh, already did and stop at her ear and then we'll glue it down or you can do the back. You could do either or, but I'd rather do the front first. So you want me to do it? Yes. Do you want me to do one side and you do the other side? Yeah, I do that. Okay. Cause I don't like when you second guess yourself you got this okay so i'm gonna do one side and you do the other side i got my dot drop it you can go the opposite direction okay not too many swipes drop it come down if you need to take that over because i do like it you see that i do like it flat leave it alone silicone is a whole different monster down that's what i think my problem was when i like first messing with it too much I used to try to like, cause I'm so used to the um, the white glue. Yeah, like you really gotta like, you know. So that's it. Okay. You got this. Got your dot on there. And if you need to go the other way, you can swipe it one time, but you gotta hurry up cause it's drying. That's good. And work your way down to the top of her ear. You know, this was the acrylic glues. The clear glues were like generally what we all use back in the day. And you know, uh, for some people it can be a little, you know, hard to clean. So I did stay away from those. And uh, once I um, had a little ed more education when it comes to the silicone, I felt like I liked that better, especially for my people who do have alopecia because everybody is not uh, confident to walk around with their head just out, you know? So with that being said, they're not gonna wanna take their wigs off that often. And when it comes to the bowl hole mat, it's gonna last you um, four to six weeks. Is that good? Yes, let's see on the top of the ear. Did you get the top of the ear? Come right here. And then give me a little bit down here on that sideburn and then over the top of the ear. Everybody you running when they see clear glue, but it has its, its purposes. So I think that's what you have to keep in mind. So if somebody like her, she if she's gonna put a wig on for vacation, she probably not gonna wanna keep taking it on, take it off, or take the risk of hugging somebody in the wig shifting. Yeah, okay, I think I'm done. Let me see. Yeah, I think so. No, that's good. All right, so this is how you test test it. Now, I, I know that you just did that side, so I know that's not dry, right? But when you test it, you wanna tap it, but it won't be long before it's dry over there. It takes anywhere from three to four minutes. A lot of that is gonna be determined by how thick that coating is. I'll check my side. No stringy there, no stringy there. It's good, we just waiting on your side. You see me, I will have strings all over. <laughs> you probably had it on too thick. Yeah. Cause I'm just like I said, I'm just so used to a white glue. Mm -hmm. like, I actually think this is just as easy and fast. No, but I like to take my wigs off, so I only wear Max in the summer, and I have dry skin. So if I put the Max on, I'm stuck for like at least two or three weeks, and I cannot do that, especially with me doing as many demonstrations and stuff like that. When I do the Max, I'm jumping straight in the water because I needed to loosen up because it's still not coming off. So I needed to get ready because I'm ready to go to another wig. So that's why I only do it in the summer. You see the difference? So it weighed like a couple minutes. It did not string up, but see how that's out? Yeah, it was still drying. But at least you know what it looked like. This looks scary. Like Smurfette. But we about to cut all this off. I like it. You like it? You know I love me some color. Yeah, I do too. Let's see. I want to tap it and it don't turn like, like that. All right, so now that we are dry, I want to go ahead and remove my little white dots. And I'ma have you put her on. Good job. Then you're gonna press it in. You're gonna go along and press it in. With my fingers? Mm hmm You wanna use a comb? Yeah. Press it in with your hand just a little bit and then do the comb to make sure you're not get you shouldn't get no kickback because those layers were thin. All this can be cut off because of how she's wearing it. You can do it with the comb now. 
I just wanted to make sure I wasn't. I was. I like to do that with with my hand. Yeah. Because that way I can see if I'm getting some tacky. Mm -hmm. And then because if you're going with that comb, it's really gonna get you. But I, I I felt like those layers were so thin it wasn't gonna happen. But I think that's important to know. All right. So if you want to, we can cut that, which it wouldn't be a big deal. We can cut that. We can cut it later. So what we want to do now? Let's make sure these sides. It's gonna kind of like come over her ear a little bit. Mm -hmm. Make sure them sides is down. Smash that in. Let me see. Because we're going to have to cut around her whole thing because this wig is too big. So see? Okay, yeah. I keep forgetting we're cutting, so pull it. Oh, I'm pulling it over her ear. Mm hmm Because we're going to cut off the excess. Mm hmm Yeah, we're going to cut all that off. So I'm going to press that in. Now we can flip it up. Look at how little her head is. See all that got to that gotta come out? Yeah. That's a lot. Someone who has alopecia, this is the best way, in my opinion. So we're going to take that glue and we're going to come all the way. So you will take some hair from here, pull it straight out, and then cut it. You see the guy? Yeah, you don't want to cut it. You could do a razor too, but I still feel like this might not be. The density is so thin. So whenever you work with people with thin hair, you don't want to cut it too, too short. Even in, you know, in real life. You see how you can see all of that? We don't want to cut that too short. It, either way it go, when I get to like uh, molding it and doing the ways, it's going to look like it's even shorter, but it's not. So that's my guy. So I'll just travel straight over here and finish cutting that right there. And then match it to the bottom piece. Pull it out at 90 and cut. So this right here, I always cut that last because I want to bring that forward, you know, to fringe the face. So I'll cut the rest of this here at 90. That's my guy. So I'll say about here. Then I, I kind of go in a V. And I match up with that in a V. I weigh with gel and mousse. Both at the same time? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard for this hair to stay in place. It'll pop up on you. You ever notice that when you waving? Yeah. It, it, it pops up on you. With just mousse. Wigs, weave. Real hair not gonna pop up. When you finger wave and weave, it, it'll pop, it won't, it won't hold its shape. Oh, Your yeah. wave will end up being bigger than what you wanted. Like, so I have to use a little gel. We finger waving. It's gonna be so cute. Let me get a little bit more um, water, mousse, and gel. But I do the gel on top. It's just gonna give me that hole. I use Eco Styling Gel and mousse when I'm doing my waves. And I don't use a lot of gel, just a little bit. I just wanna make sure it's saturated. We're gonna weigh the top too, but we're gonna go back over with the curling iron for that style. It may not be just like what you sent me, but it's, you can definitely get it close. So when I'm waving, I use these two. I use an all-purpose comb and a rat tail comb when I'm waving. So I want to go with a little gel because like I said, if you just try to wave with mousse alone, your waves are not going to be defined. So I just do a little bit of gel. Okay, so when you start the wave, you want to create a C shape, like comb it in this direction all the way around for your first wave. And see, that's what I mean about gel. As long as I got the mousse on there, it's not going to get real hard. Plus, weave don't get that hard. Yeah. So you don't got nothing to worry about. So once you create that C, that C shape, C, C, it don't have to be like a perfect C, but just going in that direction. Then I want to go here. See, in order for that to stay, like you got to have some kind of gel because you see what I mean it'll, it'll flip once we get going she's gonna be fine okay so get your C ready for when we get on the other side keep working in that same pattern it's easier if you go ahead and make get this the opening the C opening ready you can even do a clip right here like right here just for a second then I'll come over here if you need a little water because you don't want that gel to be drying up on you use a little water this was not combed in the C but that's okay you can do it a little bit at a time C if it pops up on you, get a little gel. Gel ain't gonna hurt nobody. Make that see. If you feel like it's gonna pop up, grab you a little gel. So this is a full lace wig that we are finger waving. All right, so back to where we were. See, it's, it's poofy right there. So we wanna do a little gel. Undo that clip. 
Cause you know my goal was to cover up the lace. And this can, you can even do this. You can turn it that way. Those little bitty clips that they sell in the store, though, those single prong clips, those short ones, they good for that kind of stuff right there. And then you just keep going. But like this stuff like this will pop up on it. So you want to go back and add just a little bit. Keep it neat and you can cut that. And then you just finish waving. This right here cup is probably too long, but let's look and see what happens. It's easier to get this side. You just got to pull it, drag it. I just always been the type of hairstylist that I'm like, I need to know how to do a little bit of everything. That way if somebody asks me, I don't got to send them down the street. It's always best to leave yourself room for error because if you don't, you're going to be mad because that was looking long. Like if you didn't realize like what's, what's about to happen, because you know we got that, uh, that bottom piece down there that was light. See, now I have enough hair to cover it. If you do some finger waves, get, go buy those short clips. You're going to need them, especially around the front hairline. You're going to need them. Can you do blue? Have them seasick? But I always like buckle wave it so that I don't have that much work to do. All I'm gonna do is push it. Some people don't do the buckle wave. They just curl it after a dry, but this, this will give you like some shape. And when you get ready to put the curls to it, just make your job easier. There's nothing wrong with not doing it. Just, you could we could have just sat under the dryer. Damn, lace assassin, assassinated. <laughs> so this stuff right here, you can comb that out. Go back, hit it with the curling iron. Take a little of my ultimate silk or any kind of shine that you like to use. Cause it's supposed to be like a soft look, right? Give it formation. All we have to do is hit it with the um, curling iron wherever we want to. It's one of those things where you have to play with it to get it where you want it to be. I really be using a whole lot of product. I don't want to spritz it because I can change it. So you just do it at the end. Mm-hmm. I'm putting just a little spritz on it. My generation, I don't do nothing but weeds. Ain't nothing wrong with that because time is all you got these days. All right, look at her. She looking purdy. Yes. All right, guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below. Also, make sure you're following Lace Assassin on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. Thank you for teaching me this technique. You know I struggle with short hair. Anything old school, you know I struggle with. <laughs> Thank you, guys.